Paxton House, near Berwick-upon-Tweed, was one of the first in the UK to install a piped water system for domestic use. Join me for an introduction to Paxton House, an explanation of the need for and the implementation of the pipe supply over the centuries, and finally a tour of what can be seen of the various implementations. Located approximately four miles west of Berwick-on-Tweed, Paxton House is situated in 80 acres of woodland and gardens on the Scottish or northern shore of the River Tweed, which forms the border with England. The house was built in 1758 by Patrick Hume of Billy for his intended bride, Sophie de Bront, who was of Prussian descent. However, due to parental disapproval in both families, the marriage never took place. The house was designed by James and John Adams in a Neo-Palladian style. This is a house with a simple exterior, having perfect symmetry. A temple-style front, which is a triangular roof pediment supported by columns, as can be seen in this image, and steps leading to a sentry-placed door. The landscape designer, Robert Robinson, was commissioned to devise a scheme for the grounds. The entrance avenue, bridge, walled garden and the general form of the grounds are to his design. On the failure of his marriage plans, Patrick sold the unfinished home and semi-completed gardens to his nephew Ninian who, although living on a plantation in Grenada and later becoming its 15th governor, ensured the completion of the project with interiors designed by Robert Adams and furniture by Thomas Chippendale and William Trotter of Edinburgh. Following Ninian's death in 1795, the house passed to his brother George, who added the East Wing designed by Robert Reed to house the library and picture gallery. The house then passed through succeeding generations of the Hume family who mainly developed the grounds in accordance with the fashion and lifestyle of the day. Hot houses were added to the walled gardens, rhododendrons and conifers to the parkland. Ultimately, the house was owned by John Hume Robinson the local Labour MP who gifted the house, contents and grounds to the charitable Paxton Trust, which currently maintains these for the public to enjoy. I hope these photos of Paxton House interiors might whet your appetite for a guided tour of the house. I previously published a blog of a stroll around the Paxton House grounds in 2021 and I cycled here in September of this year, 2023. In the latter vlog, I mentioned that Paxton House was one of the first to have a piped water supply. But how was this achieved? Whilst Paxton House was being built and the interiors decorated under the ownerships of Patrick, Ninian and George Hume, it was recognised that water from the River Tweed and the Lynn Burn, which flowed through the Paxton Dean, a deep ravine to the north of the house, were not safe to drink. However, the four springs flowing from below the sandstone bedrock of Paxton Dean were clean, sweet and potable. This water was collected in a stone system from which servants would carry buckets of spring water uphill to the house. Around 1800, in the early days of the Industrial Revolution, good quality casting of iron had been perfected and George Hume decided to install a water wheel to raise the spring water from Paxton Dean to the house. There were three designs of water wheel available at the time. The overshot, breast shot, and undershot as shown in this diagram. George chose to install a breast shot design as this was believed to be the most efficient. 
where the water flows into buckets in the middle of the wheel. The water to dry the wheel is fed from a dam further upstream via a penstock. Originally a dug channel, but later replaced by a pipeline in 1814. This delivered water via a wooden laundra to where it could be released into the buckets on the left hand side of the wheel. The rotation of the wheel was translated into a reciprocal motion using an eccentric crank attached to the wheel spindle. This motion, in turn, was used to drive a pair of pistons, which took the spring water from the cistern, raised its pressure and delivered it to a tank in the roof of Paxton House, approximately 100 feet above. The water was then piped to the kitchen and water closets within the house. So you might think that this was good news for the servants who no longer had to haul water up from the dean. Rather, they only had to take pictures of water to the various rooms in the house. And so it was, until a dry spell meant that there was insufficient water in the Lindburn to drive the wheel. On these occasions, servants were sent to turn the wheel by hand, a back-breaking task. Thankfully, in the late 1860s, a horse gin was installed, where a horse walking in a circle pulled a drawbar attached to a pivot. This, in turn, was connected to the water wheel pump, meaning that there was no need for manual rotation of the water wheel when there was low water in the Lynn burn. I bet the servants were grateful for this addition. This combination of water and horsepower continued to supply the water to Paxton House until 1897, when A. Blake's B-type hydraulic compound ram pump, or Hydram for short, was commissioned. An explanation for how this pump works is shown in this diagram. I just wonder whether a thousand gallons a day satisfied the water needs of such a large house. Later, between 1930 and 1936, two wells, each of them approximately 25 feet deep and 10 feet in diameter, were dug within the grounds. One of these is situated close to the horse gin, and the other is somewhat upstream. Electric pumps were installed to lift the water from these wells to the tank within the roof of Paxton House and were commissioned in 1936. Finally, in 1960, Paxton House was connected to the mains water supply and the various pumping systems became redundant. Now I've explained how Paxton House became an early adopter of piped water. Let's have a look at what can still be seen of these pumping systems. At ground level, there is little to see except for the demonstration tap and cistern at the edge of Paxton Bain. When water is running from the tap, the water wheel is in operation. Usually 1 to 2 p.m. March to October. At other times, it is stationary. Public viewing of the water wheel is via the steep flights of steps leading down into the ravine adjacent to the demonstration cistern. Just take a few moments as you descend, or again as you ascend, to peruse the information plaques on the landings to gain a better understanding of why and how pipe water was installed. Be aware that the steps and the platforms can be busy when the wheel is operating. When you arrive at the bottom of the steps and turn into the viewing platform, you will first see the remnants of the horse gin and then to your left, the water wheel. Unfortunately, this is not the original water wheel from 1800 as that was destroyed during a flood in 1948. In 2017, it was replaced by similar donated parts from the local village of Blackadder. It has since been restored to full working condition. After viewing the wheel and the horse gin, leave the viewing platform and turn left. Here you will find the information boards regarding the hydrant pump. Similar to the water wheel, the pump was affected by the Great Flood of 1948, but survived 
its internment. It has been refurbished and is believed to be the only working example of a compound hydram on public display in the UK. As you return towards the steps leading up the side of the ravine, look below the notice board entitled It's Always Springtime, where you can observe the top of one of the wells. I believe the electric water pumps were located within the adjacent stone building upon which a horse caricature leans. Finally, it's time to make good use of those landings as you ascend the steps back to ground level. Having investigated the Paxson House piped water systems, it's time to leave via the avenue designed by Robert Robinson back in the 1750s. Hopefully he would be proud of what it is today. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like to help share it to more people. Thanks for watching. Until next time, bye for now.